EZ, Natural Selection TV and that. You know what, I just want to share some stuff out I find, stuff I found out, out about the, the inspirational plant man that's just inspired by like four processes in my mind and like give me like a perspective of what plants are and what plants are capable of and like the power and the intelligence of plants, do you get me? And basically that plant's tobacco, wild tobacco to be specific. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go into like a bit about the biome of the tobacco plant and like what it actually does. And then like my perspective of like why that's bad boy and then um, why it's amazing and that and then yeah hopefully you can bounce off it and find your own perspective in it um, but inspired me so I thought I might share it so first of all for the tobacco plant seed to germinate it needs wildfire to happen do you get me so that's a rarity so these seeds can be chilling there for hundreds of years do you get me so but i'm saying now it's been a hundred years a wildfire has popped off G seeds have germinated and we've got new growth in like a ash filled really fertile environment um the plants can then come up against a completely different climate, different animals that live in the area. Like it can be a different world a hundred years later, it can be a different world. So it's gonna come up against mad different things that it's never experienced. So it comes prepared with the tool in it. So basically we got the new tobacco plant growth there and we've got all the animals coming now because it's like a fertile ground now after that fire. And we've got all sorts of animals coming to feed on the plants, one of them being the wild tobacco plant. But the tobacco plant's got, got its secret weapon in it. So it produces a toxin called nicotine, which obviously you've probably heard of. And um, that basically poisons anything that's got a muscle. So then they're no longer a problem to the plant. But there's one animal, um, which is this caterpillar. And this caterpillar is immune to nicotine in it. So the plant still has got an issue. And this caterpillar can go through the plant again. You can yam a plant like. Um, so what this plant then does, um, it recognises which specific species it is by the saliva that's going onto the leaves. Um, and it recognises which caterpillar it is. It then sends out a signal in the form of an aroma, it sends out a vibration in the, in the form of a smell. And that signal, the first thing that signal does is it alerts the other tobacco plants in the area that there's caterpillars about. So yo, prepare, you get me, Do, put up your defenses. And the other thing it does, it alerts a specific other species called the big eyed bug. And the big eyed bug is the predator of the caterpillar. So it alerts this specific species to come into the area. Um, so it attracts that, that species to come into the area. Then it deposits like these sugary snacks onto the leaves and and they're like the perfect like, thing that the caterpillar loves them. Whatever that is, the caterpillar loves it and it's irresistible. The caterpillar yams that and then it makes the caterpillar release hormones that hormones that make it smell bare strong so then the big-eyed bugs are flying in the area now 
and now they can smell these caterpillars and they're getting yam the caterpillars um but you think okay that's a sick strategy do you get me boom but the problem is that the reason the caterpillars are there in the first place is because the mother of the caterpillars the hawk moth is the main pollinator of the tobacco plant um, the tobacco plant blooms in the night the flowers come out at night because it pot it, its pollinator is is the moth but the moth lays bare eggs when it's pollinating it and so the eggs turn into the caterpillars which are immune to the nicotine so even though it has this bad boy strategy sometimes it still ends up infested so if it does get end up infested it then changes it decides to change um, its flower shape, colour, pattern, design, smell and sugar content in the nectar. And it does this. Oh, and it decides to bl start blooming in the day, no longer blooming at night. And it does this because it wants to change pollinator and it's no longer interested in that moth. But it does this plant by plant, depending on the plant's specific experience. So if that plant has experienced bare caterpillar infestations after doing bits to try and get them away, it chooses to change. And it now starts to develop a communication with the hummingbird and no longer deals with the moth and no longer gets the caterpillar infestation. <clears throat> so that's what, the, that's what the plant does. Now, to me, that shows me that <laughs> that plant, one, acknowledges its family around it and it knows who's related to it because it alerts them when there's a problem. It also recognises species by species by the saliva. And not only that, but when it recognises the species, it can recognise that species exists in a society within itself and has separate other species that are the enemy of it, like the predator of that. And then it would know what signal to send out to bring that other species into the area. It develops like a, some food that the caterpillar cannot resist, but it's a trap to make it smell really strong for that predator now that it's attracted in to come and eat it. Like that's, that's smart, bro. And then when that still doesn't work, it then decides, okay, why am I getting these eggs? Why, why are these caterpillars actually coming? Why are these caterpillars actually all around me? Oh, because their mother, like their mother, do you get me? Like their mother, <laughs> who, who's me pollinator, she's laying them eggs. She's bringing them caterpillars. Okay, I'm gonna change me flower and like be what the hummingbird likes. Let me change my sugar content in my nectar. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, boom. I'm not gonna get the moth now and then the moth's not gonna make them caterpillars come. But come on. <laughs> anyway, boom. This is Natural Selection TV. Big love and above.